Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 20th of June 2014. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up your daily Steam deals. Bear in mind, of course, that these deals do roll over, meaning they will be available for 48 hours. So if you missed yesterday's deals, go to your Steam clients, scroll all the way down below that giant map of the summer adventure, below Community Choice, and you will see yesterday's big deals. I also did a sale box yesterday. If you need any information on those titles whatsoever, please also bear in mind that percentages and prices given on this show may very well be wrong because it's recorded soon after the sale goes up and Valve has this annoying habit of changing prices arbitrarily for no apparent bloody reason as they just did on Dynasty Warriors Extreme Legends. If the prices are not the same on Steam as they are in this video we apologize we really don't know why Valve does this. As usual remember that the flash deals are always going to be the lowest possible price that the game is going to be at so if you see it in a flash deal and not in a daily feel free to pull the trigger if you like the look of what you see. Let's begin, shall we, with Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Complete Edition. 50% off. It's a fairly recent port over to the PC. Now, Dynasty Warriors fans, of course, are in a league of their own in terms of what they like and what they don't like. I have no idea what the appeal of Dynasty Warriors is. That, that's actually not true. I do know what the appeal is. I just find other games do that kind of horde-based massacre simulator just a little bit better. Unfortunately, the port is not very good, and indeed, the screenshots that you will find on the page are lies because this was ported over from the PlayStation 3, not the PlayStation 4. It does run at 60 frames per second, so it is a little better than the PS3 version, but it is not up to scratch compared to the next-gen console version. So basically, they took the last-gen version and ported it over to PC rather than the current-gen version and ported it over to PC. So, it's pretty damn bare minimum, honestly. It is a bare-bones port. It doesn't have mouse support of any description. You're pretty much going to need a controller to play this properly. The key bindings are god-awful. Thankfully, you can change them. I would strongly, regardless, recommend a controller for this. And there's no online play either. If you have been desperately looking for the Dynasty Warriors experience on PC, well, you will get it, and it's still pretty much playable. But, as I said... Very much bare bones, and if you haven't played a Dynasty Warriors game, it boils down to during the Romance of the Three Kingdoms period, you are legendary warrior slashing thousands of peasant soldiers to death and occasionally fighting a boss and running around fairly large levels trying to win the battle. I mean, it's really kind of that simple. They're all pretty much the same. There's a lot of content to be had here, but they equally did strip out things like online, so... It's hard to recommend this, honestly, at this price. I think it, once it goes lower than this, which will be in a future sale, then maybe you might want to look at it. But as it stands, I personally don't think it's worthwhile. The Walking Dead Season 2, 50% off, which is currently up to Episode 3, by the way, if you're wanting to know where exactly you're buying in. The Walking Dead is widely regarded as Telltale's best work to date, and I certainly wouldn't disagree with that whatsoever. If you're looking for a grim adventure that involves some pretty damn hard choices and the occasional QTE-style action sequence, then The Walking Dead is absolutely fantastic. It's got a really unique graphic style. It's got some amazing characters and good story, although you should bear in mind that a lot of the choices you make are fairly superficial for the most part. You will not find too many game-changing choices. In fact, there's a few more of those in The Wolf Among Us, which was the next game that Telltale made. But regardless, damn good, honestly. Really, really good at what it does. It's one of those games that seems like it's a bit of a point-and-click, and it kind of is. It sort of evolved out of point-and-clicks. It took parts of the point-and-click genre and implemented it in a way that is actually more similar to the kind of things that David Cage does, although I'd say it has even more gameplay in it, and it certainly has hella better storytelling. So please, by all means, have a look at The Walking Dead. Although, you probably want to start with Season 1, because there's no point in starting with Season 2 whatsoever. Season 1 is also heavily discounted, by the way, alongside its DLC 400 Days. RPG Maker VX Ace, 75% off. I got nothing. I'm sorry. It's even hard to find information on this online. It's a piece of software that allows you to create JRPGs, essentially. It's been used to make a bunch of fairly amateurish titles. It has a lot of preloaded assets, and if you want to make maybe a short RPG for your friends, then yeah, sure, why not? It's probably one of the easier ways to do so, but I, I'm sorry. I really couldn't tell you anything about this. 
as I said, it's basically software. It's not really a game at all. So, yeah. Also, the DLC, even on sale, is $153. So, outside of the sale, it was more like $500. Just, wow, pricey. Plague Incorporated Evolved, 33% off. Not exactly a big discount on this one. Plague Incorporated was kind of borrowed from another web game, and this is actually still in early access, by the way. It's definitely completely playable, but it is still in active development with more content coming out. It actually came out on the iPad a long time ago, and some would argue that it's something of a clone of the game Pandemic. That said, Pandemic was a web game that was built years ago, and didn't really have too many updates whatsoever. It is arguable that Plague Incorporated took some of the ideas of Pandemic and then evolved it on and made a full commercial title out of it. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding this one. I mean, this, this argument went down actually two years ago when this thing first appeared. Although, frankly, I think there are arguments to be made that Plague Incorporated is the superior game. This is less of a case of 3s versus 2048, where we know it was a, a blatant and inferior ripoff. We're talking about something that was actually based on a web game and ended up being significantly better as far as I'm concerned. Whatever the case, it's a fairly simple game involving creating a virus or pathogen and trying to kill off the entire world with it before the world is able to develop a cure. It's certainly quite interesting and frankly sadistic, and you can evolve your virus in a wide variety of different ways, which does give it a decent amount of replayability. It's a reasonable discount for a game that, frankly, is pretty much done, even though it's listed as being in early access, although it does have things like multiplayer mode coming a little bit later on. Outside of that, though, it's pretty much complete, and it's a decent amount of fun. That said, even on sale, it's over 10 times the price of the iOS version. So, while it may be evolved and certainly has more content than the iOS version, can you justify paying 10 times as much? Hard to say. Now, this is not actually the kind of game that I'd sit down to play for hours and hours and hours and hours. The iPad version is a boatload cheaper. Although, it is worth noting that the iPad version also has in-app purchases, so... The complete experience is available on PC for about the same price as the complete experience would be worth over on iPad, but perhaps you don't like the game, in which case you don't want to buy the complete experience. It's just a nicer business model as far as I'm concerned, the ability to buy as you go. Another early access game here, Prison Architect, that gets a fairly hefty discount of 66%. And this is one of the originals when it comes to early access. This is actually one of the most respected. This is in Alpha 21. Like, they are spending a lot of time getting this game up to standard. And right now, it's in a really good spot. And at this kind of discount, as much as I usually say, you know what, you might actually not want to get involved in early access. This is one of those few games that is really, really worthwhile. It's an excellent prison management simulator with fairly cutesy graphics. However, you're dealing with some pretty insane issues, honestly. It's kind of dark, especially the first tutorial mission, which actually involves you constructing an execution chamber. Certainly makes you think, but it's got a lot going for it. There aren't that many sort of theme park or theme hospital style games anymore. And while Prison Architect is a little bit more on the serious side, it's got a good amount of complexity. And if you're into those sort of real-time management games, Prison Architect is one of the best on the market at the moment, even though it's not finished yet. Because of how complete the game currently is, and because of the hefty discount, this actually seems like a savvy thing to go for. Once this thing actually comes out, it'll probably be a lot more expensive, but there's still a hell of a lot going for it, even in... I wouldn't even describe an early stage. This thing's been trucking for over a year now, and has a lot of content in it, so... Yeah, it's one of those rare cases where I would say, you know what, early access might very well be worthy of your time. Especially if it's got such a heavy discount. Game Dev Tycoon, 60% off. Uh, this is one of those games where the theme is absolutely fantastic, but the actual implementation and the mechanics of the game, not really a big fan of those. Now, these can be improved, of course, with mods. They have created a mod editor for this. But when I played this, I actually streamed the game, and we had a lot of fun coming up with stupid game names and 
sort of pandering and doing parodies based on the existing game's landscape, but the actual game itself is not particularly interesting, and it does involve simply messing around with sliders and trying to figure out what the crazy logic of the game actually is, which is best done through a wiki. Frankly, it is possible to win every game as long as you follow the wiki guide. It's just not particularly brilliant, and that's kind of a shame because, like I said, really strong theme, but unfortunately lacking in the mechanics department, and the actual process of designing games in this particular title is extremely dull. Amnesia, a machine for pigs, 75% off. Don't think this is like the original Amnesia, it's not at all. It's by the Chinese room, yes, which means that there's less game in it, more story, more talking, and so on and so forth. It's certainly a far less of a horror game than the original Amnesia is. It's a lot more linear, it's got far less focus on exploration, far less focus on puzzles, and far more focus on it ramming its bloody storyline right down your throat. It seems to me that the Chinese room don't actually have much of a clue when it comes to designing an engaging horror game. Most of the doors you will find in the game are locked, and it will be pushing you down a set path. Escaping monsters is as easy as warping to the next area. It unfortunately cuts out a lot of the horror and the gameplay associated with that and replaces it with narrative, 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 narrative. So if you dislike the narrative, then you will also dislike the game. The original Amnesia is far, far better. It's also far longer, I might add. This is not a lengthy game whatsoever. And Amnesia The Dark Descent also happens to be cheaper. So you know, if you're going to get a horror game, get The Dark Descent and skip a machine for pigs. You're not really missing much. Bound by Flame, 40% off. This is a fairly recent release from Spiders. Well, that would be a development house called Spiders, not actual Spiders. Although there are times when I look at the dialogue of this game that I think it might have been written by them. Regardless, I did do a fairly in-depth video on this, and unfortunately, I really am not all that much of a fan of it. It has some interesting ideas, and it's certainly got some very impressive visuals. Unfortunately, the combat is extremely sluggish, it is badly designed, it's mechanically flawed as far as I'm concerned, and you will not be doing a huge amount of damage if you go down the wrong build. I should point out, by the way, the game doesn't really give you any sort of indication whatsoever as to what the right build is. I ended up screwing my character up in a big way, going down the pyromancy tree, and not fully committing to the demonic side of my character. Now, the game gave me no indications as to what was going to be happening there, and it means that I ended up with a character that ran out of mana too easily, then couldn't do any bloody damage. Regardless of that, you die very fast in this game, the combat arenas are generally poorly designed, the enemies are damage sponges, and the parry system is completely and totally flawed, simply due to the fact that it's almost impossible to properly stagger enemies, which is bound to a stat within the game, and is nowhere near reliable. That's definitely a shame, it's virtually impossible to recommend at that price, and frankly, it's just an inferior Witcher 2, which you can currently get for 80% off, so you should just do that instead. And finally, State of Decay, 75% off. Uh, this is probably the best game in the sale, frankly, and they've also put a bit of a discount on some of the DLC. Breakdown is down to 75% off, while Lifeline, the recent release, that's 33% off. Currently, the game is still single-player only. They said they were working on some multiplayer, but that's not in the game as of yet, and who knows whether it actually will be. This is a single-player zombie survival game, which involves setting up a kind of base and gathering supplies, gathering survivors, and going on missions. It's actually pretty great. I, I'm going to be honest about that. It's really pretty, pretty great. And for that price, it is hard to argue with either. If you like the idea of open-world zombie survival and don't want to deal with the annoyance of other people in games like DayZ and Rust and things like that, then State of Decay might very well be for you. It's a game about resource management and trying your best to survive in a very hostile world. It's got a pretty interesting world to explore, honestly, and a bunch of reasonable characters nonetheless. It's fun. Yeah, it really is. And the PC version is solid too, runs a lot better than the 360 version did, so it's not difficult for me to recommend this. Alright folks, there you go, there's your Steam sale for the day. Not exactly a selection of brilliant games, is it? No, no, day two is a bit of a disappointment, but the occasional thing that's worth picking up. 
I will be back tomorrow with yet more Steam deals. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.